in healthcare, as we shift our model towards a value-based preventative model, nurses are pushed to provide higher quality care, all while saving hospitals money. But in order to do that, nurses really have to use innovation as a solution. Although it's easy to identify innovation as an outcome, nurses really struggle to identify what structural components or personal components make up innovation. Hello, I'm Dr. Tina Riley, and I'm a postdoctoral scholar at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis. It's important for us as an organization, but also as nurses to innovate in order to uh, not just be competitive uh, in the marketplace, but also to provide better care um, increase patient safety to uh, meet specific metrics or regulations that are set either on a national level or a local level. Innovations are cutting edge and when they fail, they can have serious consequences, especially when it comes you know, to patient safety and patient lives are really at stake. So it's really important not to compromise their safety. So there's a lot of policies and structures in place that are really going to limit innovation or uh, and not support them. But with our research and generally speaking, educators really need to help foster innovation through education, allowing nurses to be accountable and cognizant of what their changes are, but all while being safe at the same time. This is important in order to you know, continue to move that needle within nursing profession towards these new innovations and towards better practice. The more you try to describe what innovation is, the harder it becomes to define. really fascinating that um you know in in our day-to-day -day term we're able to just feel like we all understand what innovation is and we're able to just conceptualize it and just we we don't put a lot of thought into it but when you really try to describe what innovation is we really struggle to clearly identify the components and everything associated with that of innovation or innovative behavior Nurses, because they are at the forefront of uh, healthcare, they're at the bedside, they make up most of the healthcare system. They are power players in being able to advocate for and push for innovations in healthcare. So it's really important that they are curated and, and taught how to be innovative in order to embrace that role. No one else has been looking at innovation in exactly the way that we have within nursing. But when you look at innovation as like a structure with multiple components influencing it, you really need to understand when you dial in these different components, which components are making the most impact on the outcome of the innovation. And, and in order to do that, you, um, you really need to have different metrics at various levels. And I feel like right now, the current research isn't really exploring into what, how you measure it on those earlier, more antecedent factors associated with uh, innovation, like what will facilitate and promote it? And what little knobs do we need to dial in, in order to best make someone or some organization innovative? This research is going to inform the specific structural components that uh, build up or make innovation. You know, uh, we discussed specifically what the characteristic and cultural components are as antecedents to innovation. We also discuss innovation as a process and uh, understanding and conceptualizing innovation on that level is really going to help clinicians and managers alike uh, be able to better uh, make subtle or even drastic changes within healthcare to support and foster that innovation. I'll leave you with this question that I want you to think about. I want you to think about your organization. Are you able to identify structural components that already exist in your work that facilitate or foster innovation? And as you think of that, what are the necessary changes that are better to promote innovative thinking? Thank you for watching and we hope that you enjoy and read our paper.